Teacher trainers Malcolm Reed and Alison Fletcher are bringing their searching eyes to a year two maths lesson. They'll be analysing teaching strategies, assessing what works and why, and offering suggestions for developing best practice. The full lesson and lesson plans can be found at Uncut Classrooms Maths on the Teachers TV website. The teacher is Pretty Poole, Key Stage 1 and 2 Maths Manager at Wincliffe Primary. The lesson today is based on the discussion that the children are having, so it's very important that I am going around the different groups and I'm listening to what they are saying. The lesson is on 2D and 3D shapes. So these are 2D shapes, they're flat shapes. What about those? Did you get any of those? Yeah. yeah. yeah? Say no, which one did you get? A sphere. What's a sphere like? That's nice, like a, a ball, sphere like a ball, so relating it to right. a real life so, object. That's good. We can remember our shapes, can't we? I like yeah, the indicating the, the thinking. Yeah. <laughs> Have a little look. Put your hand up if you've got some of these shapes when you're having a chat with your partner. It's a mixed ability class. High achievers, low achievers. She starts by okay. teaching them as one. Now that we've had a little refresh and we can remember those shapes, what did we're going say? to try and guess now my 2D or my 3D shape. And I'm going to be using some of these special keywords. You read them with me. 2D, 3D, corners. Really exemplary practice to share the keywords at the front of the lesson and then have them visible all the way through the lesson so that the children can practice using them and see how they're written. This is really interesting because I'm not a maths expert. My field is literacy. And I think that this relationship between the written word and the concept establishes the fact that there's a, there's a, a real attention to literacy that's going on. She's clearly um, both expecting and engaging the children in reading. The mathematical literacy that's implicit in anything that you do um, with children to do with learning shape names and describing um, is really important. I think people often think that literacy is something separate that happens in English and of course what's being absolutely reinforced here is that there are a variety of literacies depending on the kind of practice that you're involved in and mathematics has its own literacy and, and of course it embeds you can't itself. communicate the mathematics unless you've got the vocabulary and absolutely. The, the literacy to do that and you can't share your problem solving or your thinking with somebody else unless you've got that that code really. Okay so are you ready to guess my shape? OK, I'm going to give you some clues for my shape. And when you think, I've got it, draw it on your whiteboard. OK, you can draw the shape, or you can write the word, or you can do both. So can you just pop the lights up for me? I am a 2D shape, so a flat shape. I have got... She quietly says flat, so she's also reinforcing the meaning of 2D, isn't she? Three corners. What am I? So straight away using some of those keywords off the list. Yeah. And what I love about this is that the children have something to do while she's talking. So it's not simply a listening exercise and then coming up with the answer, which is what you see in all sorts of classrooms. And she's clearly thought that through. I like how she plays mm -hmm. for time here. OK, do you want to come to the front? If you've already drawn it ever so quickly, see if you can write it as well. See if you can remember the spellings. Some of the children finish very quickly and she says to them, can you write it down as well? Yeah. So that others have got the actual chance to have a think about it and get something onto their individual whiteboards as well. It's a lovely example of how to use um, the mini whiteboards um, and do a sort of interactive activity with a mixed ability class where it can still be pitched to the different abilities yeah. as well. Yeah. Alison fast forwards to the main activity. Our main objective today is we're going to be, some of us are going to be sorting some shapes out, some of us are Make, making out. some shapes and some of us are describing shapes. Okay, so it's going to be a very busy lesson. The class splits into five different groups based on the children's ability. Okay, each group you've got a couple of different things to squeeze into this lesson. So hexagons and pentagons, I'm going to send you off straight away. It's anyway. lovely that the groups are called shape names. Isn't it? Mm. Squares and triangles, you've got some flat boxes on your table, okay? And you've got to make them so they are 3D again. You can work in partners if you want to or make your own. I think that's a nice feature of primary classrooms, how 
there's an expectation that groups, having been given their brief, will in the main go away and immediately get on with it. Yeah, and for those squares and triangles, she knows that they're going to be engaged in going to make those boxes. She's got the TA working with the circle, so she knows she can go and help her hen pentagons and hexagons get started on quite a challenging task. That's almost four different mini lessons. Right, let's have a look. So which shape are you uh, describing? So she's got these great visiting skills of being able to look over, work out the person who needs to be prompted and moved on a little bit. Yeah. What do we call the bottom bit, children? What's the shape word for bottom? Face. Is it face? It begins with butt. Bottom. Uh, nearly the kind of the bottom. Do you know like when we have a pyramid and we say it's a triangular, triangular Face. Very good. Face. Okay, so we're looking at the faces. And she's got the classroom organised nicely. There's that kind of central space that she can move around um, in order to move out. She's not kind of getting blocked in by tables or having to say, excuse me, to get between chairs. I think that's a, that's a good point for teachers because often you see classroom layout, wow. which just makes it everywhere. really difficult for yeah. people to visit, um, particularly at an individual level, which, which creates kind of clusters of children who either never never get visited or, or in secondary schools often go off task because they know they can't be um, you know, visited and monitored directly. Is it a cube? Is it a cuboid? Let's double check. She's obviously got radar ears, hasn't she? She's Not just 360 visited. Yeah. yeah. And she's still got her mind on whether this is a square um, a cube or a cuboid. So it is a, a cube, so you can get a label. Okay, you write a cube on it. Why don't you do that? And you can stick it on there. And then you need to label the corners and the straight edges. Hexagons and pentagons. Can you just pop your pencils down? Pretty realises okay. that hexagons and pentagons have finished their task. She moves them on to a new topic, right angles. And the space from here to there is 90 degrees. Do you remember we talked a little bit about It's before? really impressive if you glance at the rest of the class how well they're carrying on with their work as well while she's focusing on these group oh, yeah. on the carpet. Yeah. They're intently making the box there. Yes. Uh, who thinks they can put their right angle measure next to a shape and say, there's a right angle? It's got to fit nice and snug in that corner. It's not about right or wrong, is it? Yeah, I lots think of that's... emphasis on finding out, checking. Lovely, thank you. Setting hexagons and pentagons a new task of sorting the shapes on their tables into those with right angles and those without. And if you're not sure, have a little chat with the people on your table. Pretty swaps back to squares and triangles and their 3D shape construction. Right then, what do you need help with? Should I put you some sound tape? So what shapes can you see here? What shapes are then? OK, is there any other shapes on your box? This is the big box they've been making, isn't it? What do you call this bit here? Rectangle, good boy. How many rectangles are there there? Her questioning's good, isn't it? She's constantly asking really good questions to draw out more knowledge for, for each of the children at their own levels. Mm. Yeah, she has a learning plan for each child, very much embedded in the activity, and she does remember to talk to each individual as much as possible. That's got to feel very empowering as a child over the day to know that your teacher, you know, has their kind of their, their head around you and is thinking about you um, at various points. Which bit do you think you need to stick on first to make the box? You tell her, you tell her what you think. Where do you think the sellotape needs to go? Fizza, you and Amber, you do want to work together? She's really encouraging them to work together, isn't she? Yeah. Really encouraging them to support each other yeah. instead of her having to be the person who's supporting everybody. Instead of becoming the fount of all knowledge that children have to get the answer from, which kind of breaks everything down to everybody rushing to the teacher, she turns it back into group activity all of the time. Is this a right angle? That's people over here. Saba. What do you think about that? Is that a right angle? That's nice, isn't it? She's sent it to the other right angle group to have a look and to ask them. Clever teaching, isn't it? Yeah, it's really encouraging their independence from her and some peer collaboration. And this is, what's this called? Curved. Curved. And you've got straight angle. The book is a right angle, yeah, because what shape is it? Rectangle. Rectangle. Very good. Good boy, right it now. All of these do, don't they? 
Yeah. What about this basket on the front? Yeah, yeah. Is that it? Can you see anything around the classroom that's got right angles? Book. Book. The board. The board. See if you can think of ten things in the classroom that have got right angles. That's a really nice little extension which she seems to have just thought of. And that's all come out of that girl over the other side with the book. The book is a right angle, yeah, because what shape is it? That, that's really neat teaching, that kind of flexibility that... Uh, Thinking on your make, feet. Yeah. That's generated such lovely enthusiasm, hasn't it? They go for it, they're excited real ownership of their own learning, haven't they, and yeah. their own activity. You, it's lovely to see. Children, well done. You have been working ever so hard. OK, we're just going to finish off in a moment. Malcolm speeds the class on. Circles, triangles, squares, pentagons and hexagons amalgamate for the final activity. Children, do you remember we've played the Guess My Shape game before? And somebody's got to stand up. She chooses a contestant and a shape. No peeking. Shall I give him a hard one or an easy one? Hard. Hard. And the contestant has four questions to work out which shape they've been given. The rest of the class, who already know the answer, respond yes or no to the questions. Rectangle, is he right? Yeah, give him a clap. Very good. Wonderful opportunity for her to assess at the end of the lesson the depth of the conceptual understanding of what makes each shape have those properties. The hardest one in the whole world, OK. The hardest one in the whole world. Okay. <laughs> She's kind of shivering, isn't she? Oh, is this good? Go on then, miss. Ask your questions. Uh, does it have corners? Yeah. yeah. Does it have a right angle? Yeah. yeah. It's a great plenary, isn't it? I think it's a point that, that many teachers could, could use, that, that, that notion of not simply getting children to parrot knowledge that they've um, gained during the lesson in a plenary, but actually asking them to reconstruct knowledge in a, in a slightly different way. A cuboid. Oh, she was close. What is it? Cuboid. Do you want to pause that? It looked effortless, didn't it? But yeah. uh, obviously the planning and the resourcing behind what then appears to be quite um, effortless in, in the carrying out um, is immense. She said at the outset that she was trying to get them to discuss and have dialogue about what they were doing um, and not be dependent on her. And I think through those little prompts and interventions, she's got that to happen. Is there anything that you kind of do differently as a maths specialist? With a... I think it's an exemplary lesson. I think it would be nice for them to extend their working with shapes that are um, quite stylised plastic shapes within the classroom mm. to actual real objects. You can imagine them going out with digital cameras and taking pictures of, of shapes, 2D and 3D um, solids yeah. around, and then coming back and bringing them to sort them and do the same sorts of, of activities with. We both love that idea of go off and find the ten objects yeah. in the room. And in a way, she, it's, it's already um, there in the lesson that the extensions into further lessons are sort of growing out. It, it's a great reminder that often the best les lesson plans aren't the ones that you make in the unit of work at the beginning of the, of the term. coming from but where the children are. Exactly. Yeah, and exactly. what the children are doing with it. Yeah, yeah. That was, I think that was a real high point. Pretty's reactions to Malcolm and Alison's observations are available via this programme's webpage. See if you can think of ten things in the classroom that were right angles. You can have a look around the classroom, see, if, see what you can find. Yeah, what else? See if you can find ten things in the classroom.